Hey, good morning. Thanks, everybody, for, um, for having me. I appreciate everyone uh, for listening. Can y'all hear me? Good? Okay. Um, good afternoon. My name is Maj Toure. I'm the co-founder of Black Guns Matter. Uh, our organization travels around the country to address firearms-related rights and responsibilities. Uh, each one of our classes, which happen in libraries, churches, recreation centers, and even on street corners, uh, where we discuss firearm safety, conflict resolution, and the law. Uh, my travels have afforded me a unique opportunity to see firsthand the issue of violence in our urban centers, as well as the failures and successes of various approaches. Uh, Black Guns Matter started four years ago, and the data we have collected has been and will continue to be a very valuable tool in saving lives and protecting freedoms as stated in the Constitution and Bill of Rights. Firstly, I know that today's hearings are centered on quelling the violence in urban communities, but the phrasing is a bit off. We do not have a gun violence issue in our urban centers. But we do have a host of other issues that, coupled with the lack of de-escalation tools, lead to violence. What we are experiencing is not an issue with guns per se, but solutionary. Giving urban Americans tangible skills has been very impactful because we define not only what our approach is, but also a parameter for staying the course of solution-based thinking. By naming what we are doing, we have given Americans in all around, all around the country an ideology to galvanize around solutions, more so than further focusing on the problem. Our focus is solutions to violence. Our approach is conflict resolution. Our goal is saving lives and mitigating trauma. Our results have been and are healing while defending freedoms. This is the solutionary way that has been effective. In 2016, when we started Black Guns Matter, it was a result of a steady barrage of media images that depicted our communities as violent and savage. That year, one of my best friends was shot in the head because of negligence. As news of his death circulated, I couldn't, as news, my, my microphone's turned off, is it on? Miss Goodwin, could, maybe you could move your mic over. Let's see. How about this one? Yeah. Okay, cool. Try it again. As news of his death circulated, I couldn't help but think how easy it would have been to ensure he knew the basics of conflict resolution and safety. I recognize that in addition to doing a voter res registration drive that year, we needed to do a license to carry drive by inviting people in my community to be safe and responsible gun owners. That year, we hosted our first class in North Philadelphia, where I'm from, expecting 35 people. Instead, 350 showed up to learn. Guns are a taboo topic in urban America, therefore safety training has purposely been withheld in our communities, and the homicide rates are a direct reflection of that ignorance. That year we started Black Guns Matter, Philadelphia saw the lowest firearm-related deaths it had since 1979. After weekly ongoing classes, which continued to overflow from the space, we began getting calls in other cities. We need you to come to Baltimore, Chicago, Brooklyn, Milwaukee, Compton to host some of these classes. With the support of crowdfunding, we started a 13 cities tour, began visiting cities with the highest homicide rates to inform members of the community on conflict resolution, de-escalation, and training. This is a place where people from both sides of the aisle can agree that this simple act of free education is saving people in my community from prison, negligence, and death. I want to take this, time to, this moment to provide a bit more in-depth information about what our classes include. Also, I want to let you know that we have now trained over hundreds of thousands of people across the country and have in almost all 50 states taking an approach that not only preserves freedoms but empowers the people. The first component to every class is firearm safety. The power that comes with firearms ownership is also a tremendous responsibility. Safety training and education to prevent negligent death is something we control with proper knowledge around firearm safety. I have a little bit of time left, so I'm going to cut back on some of this testimony. The law. Lawyers, prison, families, freedom. We have tremendous success in sharing local laws by inviting lawyers to teach beginners who may not know local carry, proper storage, and handling laws, and things of the such. The last one, conflict resolution. According to the CDC, of the 12,979 firearm homicides in the United States in 2015, 81% occurred in urban areas. For example, 2014, in Philadelphia's safest police district, which is approximately 85% white, no one was reported to be killed by gun violence. The homicide rate for black Americans in all 50 states is, on average, eight times higher. Importantly, most urban areas, especially those that experience the most gun violence, are characterized by poverty, inequality, racial segregation, and a lack of education around firearm safety. In closing, in the last four years, we have developed a curriculum. This is developed. 
We have developed a curriculum based on lived experience and case studies all around this nation in some of the areas that suffer the most poverty, human rights restrictions, and negligence in the country. Our experiences with applying these solutions have been that most people, regardless of political affiliation, respect, or people-powered initiative, communities can solve these problems on our own. Primarily because we have taken this holistic solution-based approach more than the guns are bad and the problems will just go away if you restrict them attempt. To add more restrictions to good Americans solves nothing. Education and solidarity around intelligence has been the most productive means of striking balance between solutions and respect for rights. And I don't in any way think punishment solves problems more than proper education from a holistic and freedom-based perspective. Thank you for your time. I know that we as Americans can solve this issue with logic and respect for our Bill of Rights.